Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Talking Cafe. Today, I have a very exciting topic to talk about. I'm joined by Mark Wilcox, who's the Director of Youth and Community from the YMCA. So welcome, Mark. Hi, Ruby. Thanks very much. I'm looking forward to being on your uh, Talking Cafe this morning. Lovely. Thank you for joining me. And today we're talking about young carers. Yeah, it's um, so young carers is something I've been involved in probably for a couple of years. And um, they're, they're a really brilliant um, group of young people, really impressive in terms of what they have to deal with. So, um, yeah, excited to be on the show and then talking about young carers. That'd be great. Fantastic. So a young carer is somebody who's under 18 and they care for a parent or a family member who could have a disability, illness, suffering from mental health issues or alcohol and drug problems. So being a young carer must be extremely stressful for the young person, but also they feel oblig obligated really to look after their family member, don't they? And they care about them. And I think it's a, yeah. a very important job for them to do. So what does being a young carer impact on their daily life? Okay, so young carers, there's about um, between 700,000 and 800,000 in the UK. And I think in terms of their impact, if you imagine it's not a case of just getting up, going to school, having your breakfast made made for you, focusing. It's very often some of the young some of the young carers will have to make sure getting their parent up, making sure the parent's okay. Some some parents that I can think of some young carers of their parents have got mobility problems, so it's kind of getting them out of bed, it's making sure they're okay, helping them get dressed, then seeing to the siblings. So it's getting their breakfasts ready, it's making sure that the medication. Um, they've got the medication for, for the young carers and then doing all that and making sure your siblings are ready for school and then going off to school so i think um according to some of the national statistics young carers miss about 46 days average on average of schooling being affected by the role so i think in terms of in terms of the impact there's that and very often some young carers are quite tired when they get to school because they're they haven't got time and some are catching up on homework because as soon as you get home, they still have to help. They might have to be doing the washing, the cooking. Um, so free time is very, very limited for a young carer. Um, but I think through that, they develop a lot of really good caring skills, supportive skills. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, it's taking on a bit more responsibility and almost pushed into being an adult instead of um, a, young, a young person. So. It's really admirable, but if you imagine the time of being a child is kind of squeezed away a bit because of respons responsibility, responsibility really. That's great. Thank you so much. It's there's so many factors that play into things when it comes to being a young carer because, like you said, there is school and then having time to just be a child or be a young adult and have your own time your own hobbies so we have a quick video to share to give everybody a quick idea of uh, a lovely story that's been shared here so I'll just share that one now
See, that's a very important message, isn't it? Get, getting people listened to and feeling supported and making them more aware that there are agencies and support workers out there that can offer that help and support. And I think it does really give an insight into not just the caring role. You know, you're a PA, you sort the bills, you, yeah. there's, you're you jumping straight into a lot of things that people wouldn't do. Oh. <laughs> Uh, with you just a second. Sorry, I didn't realise it would keep playing the. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't do until they get yeah. past uni stage or leave school and enter into that adulthood, and they're doing it at a very young age. So, yeah. um, one thing that I read on the YMCA Carers website is that people as young as seven can be yeah. Yeah, yeah. carers for. And have you met people like that? And we, we've, we work so just to say a little bit about what we do we're um we're supported by we're commissioned by somerset um county council and we're one of different it's different organizations so there's us ymca brunel it's ymca dolverton ymca Tolton, taunton and minor die and all providing a service for um for young carers so where they can just chill and relax and take a bit of that responsibility off um so it's really, um, yeah, it's really important. So what was your question again? <laughs> it's just making sure. Um, that people as young as seven years yeah, old. So exactly. I was wondering that the age range that you yeah. see and yeah, support so we have, people. Um, yeah, so we have, um, so young carers very often, there might, they might be siblings. So we've got a junior group and a senior group. So it might be the, um, the younger sibling will be in the junior group that's supporting and the older ones in there. But yeah, there are. Young carers um, as, as young as seven that that need that kind of, of support, and and it could be that their their brother or sister um, needs a lot of care, and sort of the focus of the family is on supporting that, and they they might feel they're helping, but they might feel a little bit isolated. So uh, a group just for that kind of age group, and it's catered for them, just having fun. Um, but yeah, imagine imagine being seven or eight and then having suddenly having all this responsibility when you just start in school and you've got to do that it's quite it's quite a lot quite a lot to take on um, it's a massive responsibility so the way being a young carer works is that the council will do an assessment um correct me if i'm wrong that's right um, that's right and they will carry out um the the person who needs support see what their support needs are what areas and whether the young person is suitable to provide those services and yeah assistance and then what happens after the assessment so happens? they will depending where they live um and they'll be contacted so ymca brunel could be contacted the team leaders or ymca dolverton or the other ones and they'll be um given the opportunity to join a young carers group so um for us we want run juniors and seniors in mendip and juniors and seniors in south somerset so young carers would get um so someone would would say that they're a young carer, they get assessed, and then what would happen was is someone from the family intervention service would link um, link them up with um, in Mendip, we've got Sarah, and in South Sunset we've got Corin, and would link them up with them, and then they get the opportunity to join the group. At the moment, it's all virtual, and we're hoping after lockdown um, to start to go back to the face to face work. So they'll be linked in. They can meet some of the young carers. And from that, um, they can start joining the group. Um, and then there's support ava available through the family intervention team and through lots of through the workers and lots of different support and through the schools. Um, so it's just giving them a two hour win window a week or every other week, the way the groups work, just to be a child without responsibility, just to have fun, to talk to other young carers who are going through the similar thing. Um, and sometimes young carers just don't want to talk about it, and that's fine. They just want to have fun. They just want to offload and do do something. And um, that you know, they're they're a real great bunch. And going back to what you were saying, I can remember um, someone was telling me, and she was probably about been doing it for quite a while. She was about 11, since eleven, twelve, fourteen. She she had to phone up to sort out like um, house house insurance. And when when you were um, 
that age, you don't even, you know, don't even think about house yeah. insurance and stuff like that. I mean, like I that. don't know what house insurance covers <laughs> fully. I just, you know, agree agree to a quote. I don't know what I'm agreeing yeah. to. So it is but, a, a huge responsibility. And, and in, in this case, the um, the I think it was a house insurance renewal, and the parents were unable to speak on the phone, so they asked um, their child to deal with it, and the operator would not speak to them because they're under eighteen, and it was just very, very frustrating. Um, but you wouldn't think, you wouldn't imagine that as a kid, you're having to deal with that kind of stuff. No, definitely so it's, not. It's all credit to you know the the ones I've seen. I've seen you know in terms of resilience and um, just their care, amazing young people, absolutely amazing. That's great. So, if somebody is thinks they're a, a child carer and they're un, they're unsure because it's just something they've always been helping their parents with or you know assisting with, how can you assist somebody to identify what they're doing needs that extra support and an assessment of needs? Okay. So, what we would do if if someone um, approached us that they were a young carer, they can do it through the schools, um, and they would. Um, Get in contact with the family intervention service in um, Somerset, and then by contacting those guys, they would link them up and um, do the assessment and put and make sure the appropriate sorts supports given. They could contact us, and we'd do the same, or, or any other providers, or through their school really. Um, so supports out there, and they'll just get linked up very, very quickly. So if they're at school, they just need to say, I, "I think I'm a young carer." And, and, Get support through there or, oh, or go direct that's great we just answered debbie's question which was does schools play a part in identifying young carers in the first instance so brilliant thank you for the comment oh, debbie that's good and i, I think it, it's definitely worth asking if someone thinks they're a young, a young carer it's basically someone who's um got, as you said substantial responsibility to support um, a member of the family um, and looking after their health and their well-being um, so yeah, it's, you know, there's a lot of support out there for young carers. Somerset County Council are, um, have commissioned, you know, commissioned the service again, and they see how important um, young supporting young carers are. They do a lot of the welfare, to be honest, a lot of the young people. So it's, um, that's fantastic that it's very well supported. Because if you know, if their child wasn't able to perform these services and assistance, then you know, external people would have to come in. Exactly. Which cause a lot more stress for the family and ultimately cost a lot a lot more money which exactly uh, but but it should be not that shouldn't be like trading off the no, um, no. young carers because childhood so there's and sometimes no. i think young par carers think they can take on too much but yeah it is it's it's, it's amazing service that they're doing with their family um and I, I think they grow up and become um very caring um young people but it's just making sure that they don't become over um to take responsibility too much you know just making sure they need to re have respite and look after themselves the young lady in the video stated she had a social worker does every young carer have a social worker allocated to them i i think it depends on need that would be depending on need really um so it might be some additional things that you get a social worker so it it really does depend on need so so no not every Every young carer would have a social worker, um, but it depends on the family need, really. Lovely. So your part as YMCA then, I understand you do lots of activities. So pre-lockdown and COVID, give me some examples of the okay. things you would do with the, the children and young adults. Okay, so what, what the team would do, they'd be um, picked up by taxis because they're safe from all over Mendit and South Somerset. So they'd come along for two hours. On a Monday, it's in South Somerset, um, so in, in Yeovil, and in Mendip, it's near Pilton, we've been in there. So what they would do is they'd be picked up, and then for two hours, they'd be doing things like um, games, activities, craft, music, I think they, um, uh, they'd be doing things like that. And food is really important for them, because some, some young carers don't have time sorting everything out. They don't by the time they go to the young carers group, they don't have time to eat. So they'd, they'd have like food, a meal together. Um, they do all sorts of things that um, trips out, get support from um, friends of young carers. They give some support. So there's all sorts of things. So we try and it's a balance between um, finding out what the young carers want to do, but making sure that 
they've got time really to have fun and to uh, talk to the young carers and just completely chill. And um, I think, yeah, they they um, they have some really good good times. And even through lockdown, they've been doing some things which I could tell you about as well. But um, yeah, so that's the kind of things that they do. Just really having fun and a variety of things from music, DJing, all sorts of all sorts of stuff, really. That's um, fantastic. And I imagine socialising is extremely important really to keep important. that going because if you're a young carer and you spend a lot of time at home, plus juggling school, homework, all this type of stuff, and then I think it's really important to keep social socially active with people because it's really easy to slip away and find yourself very isolated isn't it yeah. especially as young people when you think nobody understands what you're going through yeah. or nobody yeah, understands yeah. the role that you're playing yeah yeah totally and then you can easily i think it's in care if you're not could be feel quite isolated like a lot of people can any, anyway so um but then to as you say you know to talk to someone and you say oh okay they're, they're going through the same thing as i am and you don't feel so um, unusual and and there's kind of good there's great support um, really great support from 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 youth workers but also from each other a lot of great peer support which is which is great to see but yeah they're great I've the sessions that I've, I've been to to see what's going on, I've really enjoyed and because you know young people are great and our, and our teams love working with young with the young carers there's just something special about what they do which is really cool I think they're a fantastic group of people and yeah, I, anybody I think would be so proud to be involved. I think yeah, yeah. what a great bunch. How do, how does donations and support play a big part in you providing the service you do? Okay. So donation support is really, really important. Um, so in terms of the commission service, the service is commissioned by um, County Council. Um, there's Friends of Young Carer Group, which raise money specifically for young carers, and that helps towards trips and activities and things like that. So donations and things um, like that are really important for helping um, and then apply for additional funding for like residentials for young carers, trips out. Um, they really enjoy um, like Chris, like Christmas, the road, one of the local Rotary Clubs they hire, have been hiring pre-COVID, um, based in Shepton. They'd hired um, streets, the street from outside Small Pool, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Um, so they hired that, and they put on a barbecue and hired that just for young carers. Um, and friends of young carers would, you know, um, pay for them to go to the theater, go to the, see a pantomime at Christmas and go for a meal. So it's really important that, um, we really give you know young carers a respite, but different things to do as well. And during lockdown, they've been doing things like um, pet show. They've had a pet show, so your cat would. So oh yeah, would like he, it. Well, I don't think he'd move very far. <laughs> no, I don't. he would make so, a lovely rug. <laughs> so they've been doing pet shows. They're doing quizzes, games. Um, they've been doing cooking. So like um, different bits of cooking I think they were they produced a song working with young Somerset they produced a produced a song um, and all sorts of different things so um, just to um, yeah just to kind of support but we're, we're looking forward to coming out of lockdown and being able to um, do the physical groups which would, which would be far better lovely so where can people visit do you um, is it on your website where people can see what you've been up to and yeah, I think if they that you've been doing. Yeah, they look on our website, um, the YMCA Brunel website. They'll be able to see some some of the stuff um, that we've been doing. Um, I think, yeah, there's, there's a bit of information there um, in terms of you know what we're doing. Our Facebook as well. Um, do some yeah, do some advertising and things like that through that. Brilliant. So. Um... Another comment here says, is the YMCA service, support service, a free service? Do you charge? It's, it's free. For young carers, because it's commissioned, it's free. Yeah, so it's free for young, young carers to attend. Um, with our uh, other youth clubs, we charge you like a pound. It's just a yeah. pound for young, but for young carers, it's free. Um, but they just need to get in, in contact with the um, Family Intervention Service to get, um, get assessed. But yeah, it's, it's free. Brilliant. That's great. Lovely. So um, 
I think we've pretty much covered everything I wanted to say, but I'm I'm very intrigued to see more about what you do and more you have to tell us about some of the amazing young people you support. Yeah. <clears throat> It kind of it kind of froze. I think it could be my. <laughs> so what did you say after that? Oh, I got I see have a weird picture of um, my Wi-Fi connections dropped very low. Apparently, according. Oh, it's now it's gone. You're back. Nope. You're back. You're back. <laughs> I'm back. Lovely. <laughs> Strange weather. I think it's all over the place. That's so, cool. Um, going going back um, really to activities because this is the part that's really exciting me how can you support people to um sort of follow their hobbies and dreams if they've got something particularly in mind they really want to do such as music lessons or join a sports club um can you support in assisting people to make that happen? we can we can we can encourage them in terms of finding yeah finding that, that out so in terms of young carers yeah we would support them in doing that in our wider youth clubs um it's it's looking at hobbies hobbies are so important because jobs change don't they jobs change you yeah the gone is the day where you've been one job for life but hobbies don't so it's really or they develop so we feel it's really important to help a young person find out what that hobby is what they what they would like to do and for them to have that hobby for a lifetime they'll get a lot of resilience and a lot of support from that particular hobby um, so one of the things that we we do is like really encouraging uh, encouraging people to find that hobby um, so yeah in terms of young carers there's different activities we'll put on and then it might find um, a young person might go um, I can think of some young people that were um, into photography and, and one guy, this one, young, a young carer, but this is a young person. He did some photography projects and he ended up doing that as a career, graphics designer, and someone did, um, uh, someone got into social work and all sorts of different things. So I think um, what I find it exciting is that to be able to support a young person to find a hobby and know that hobby is going to last a lifetime and will be a real source of enjoyment for them and for other people too, that's that's a fantastic thing to do. What a thing! What a thing to do. So, um, yes, um, hobbies are so important, and we encourage. Um, we got the limitations of funding, but it would be get to know a young person and supporting them, and just encouraging them to um, to seek that as a goal, really. Um, so yeah, it's so so important. Um, I heard you know you hear stories of people that um, I think one of the one of the barriers to hobbies is that. Um, someone might think, well, because someone might think it's a bit strange or a bit weird, so we won't do it. And you hear of people not actually doing their hobbies to their 40s because they felt it wasn't following the peers. So one of the things we do is support young carers and young people to go, oh, don't worry about what other people are thinking. If it's something you really want to do, do it. Um, so we try and encourage like that because why wait 20, 30 years Exactly. You know? When the time's now, when you're mm. eager and ready to go, I feel like at the moment there's so much sort of kindness, love, and support out there at the moment. I and I don't know if it's COVID has made people more aware of others, whereas before they sort of got on the, their own hustle and bustle of daily life and never really stopped to think. But I find at the at the moment, especially on social media, obviously you have your dark sides to everything. But primarily, I'm seeing so much love and support, and yeah, people yeah. in the community wanting to reach out and they want to help and support people and make dreams happen. And people are willing to give up their time to offer free services for hobbies and and yeah, yeah. donations and guitars and anything you can think yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. And I just think, you know, it, it is really important to. If you enjoy doing it, grasp it and go for it. Yeah, I think definitely. that's great. Yeah, th there has been through the pandemic. There's been obviously horrible, you know, real horrible things through it. But also, there's been real, as you say, like really nice, genuine care and humanity that's come out of it, which has been, um, yeah, it's made us think. I think about priorities and, and things like that. But yeah, there's there's so many good things that have come out of it, even though it's really horrible. I think the communities have definitely come together because I think over time communities have sort of lost that community touch a little bit because times change you know things aren't the way they they used to be but I think as soon as last year hit a lot of 
communities were coming together to support each other and a lot of people were checking on their neighbours and mm. still are and they're still doing that type of thing. So I think it's really important, which also brings me to my next um, question. So you've been supporting the young carers throughout coronavirus and you obviously will continue to do so. A lot of the parents that these young carers are supporting could be in the vulnerable bracket. So what support are you offering or advice to young carers who are concerned about their parents' vulnerability, but they're also eager to get back into um, normal I, I, life as well? I, I think um, what we, most of our support is where there's anxiety and worry. It's just being a listening ear. And obviously um, they would, the parent would need to get the proper health support or whatever the support is and shielding and follow doctor's advice. So we would encourage that if they need to shield. But a lot of what we do is just listening, is listening um, to the young carer's worries. And also the, the family is, could could be worried about, um, you know, about coming back for the physical return and worried about school and worried about how it would affect their, their family. So I think a lot of it is, yeah, following really good um, advice, doctor's advice and things like that. But um, talking about those anxieties. And then with us, we won't, we're not going to open until it's um, a lot of like the national carers or organisations are opening because of because of the shielding. But I, I think, yeah, talk, talking about it, that anxiety is, is like half the battle, I think, and getting really good advice. So we would, we would give a lot of um, support in the young carer through the anxiety and, um, and like families as well. I know some of our team um, not only speak to young carers, they've been doing welfare checks as well, but speaking to the, um, speaking to the, the families to um, assure them as well, things like that. But um, there's other services out there which, will, which give really good support around those things. Brilliant. I think it, it's going to be a big transition from being at home um, with your family to then transitioning back to school or college um, yeah. and then being in a classroom with people when you, you know, home especially being a young carer, I imagine it's a very important place because then there is no difference. There is no, yeah. this is school, this is home. This, yeah. You're managing it all together in one place. Yeah, definitely. So when you turn 16 and you're not in full-time education, you can apply for carer's allowance, is that right? Um, to identify um, as a, an adult carer? I believe so. I believe so. I'm not, um, not my expertise in terms of that in terms of supporting but yes i, I believe so um because we support young carers up until the age of 18. yes um, that's great so if somebody felt as if they did not want to follow on school or college or they knew that they wanted to continue caring for their their parents or family member then they can look into um, applying for a carer's allowance which you can do through the the gov.gov .gov website yeah what support is out there for people who just decide they just don't want to do it anymore it's impacting their lives a bit too much and you know they they don't really want to be that young care anymore they don't want to have that brand they just want to get back to to their own sort of life or they are planning on going to a college or a university so they're not going to be around anymore okay so i, th I think th there's different support that's out there i think thinking of a young if it, it was a young carer th about thinking about what support they have got around them so immediately looking at who are the people that they could talk to so it might be a teacher might be a youth worker might be a member of a family or it might be friends so it's probably best to if they're feeling that to talk to someone they really trust to, to start with it might be that they're just um it's just a bit too much and you just need a bit of a bit of a break and a bit of a re respite and then i think it, it's it's going through there and then talking talking to the family member as well. But there's support out there in terms of, um, yeah, teachers, youth workers support the um, through the council, the um, doctor's ad advice. So a, a young carer should never feel that, right, I'm in this alone and I've got to keep going. Um, but I would recommend to uh, a young carer to think about their own support network. Um, and it might be that that's what they feel like and then that's what they need to do, but it might be it's just too much and they need a bit of a break and a bit of respite and um, talking to the doctor in terms of getting if there's support that could be accessed and things like that because it's a big it's a big responsibility um, yeah. but there you know and there's as I said there's about seven 
seven hundred thousand young young carers in this country doing at the moment. So I think a young carers group um, and things like that is a, is great opportunity for them to kind of um, get a bit of respite, a bit of support, and things like that. But I think young carers and young people and adults alike, it's good to kind of check in and think, well, what's what's our support group? Who's our support group? Who would we go to if there's a bit of bit of trouble? And um, I think it's kind of using that and there's services out there as well. So in terms of respite, is that, um, do you tailor that to whether that be respite for the child or the person receiving care? Or, or... I, I think, so focusing on the young person, yeah, obviously um, we would give support in terms of the youth, youth club and look our youth groups and look at that. And I think in terms of respite, it w that would be a thing for the, um, to get kind of health advice for the whole, for the whole family about what respite. So there might be, yeah, respite for the young carer, but respite for the family it might be getting someone external in to do some care, um, do a bit of care work for a short time. But um, yeah, ours might, Focuses more on like supporting the young, the young person, uh, and but I think yeah, in terms of doctors' advice, GPs that would be support. But having in terms of young carers, having respite every other week um, to be able to meet up and then having support, I think that's kind of like crucial as well as and, and talking to a teacher and things like that in terms of support. I think sometimes you just need that escapism, don't you? You need to be out of a situation, then you can take a step back, yeah, deep exactly. breath, and then I think when you have a regular break and you're able to socialize and have a, a lot of your own life you're less likely to reach that boiling point aren't yeah, you where you think totally. no, I've, I've had enough so I think it's an absolutely fantastic service you're yeah. providing and, and I think and I, it's extremely important and I think on that it's important for like young carers to be able to exactly what you said take a step back and being in a, being caring it almost was a, it's a lot of responsibility on for them but and it might feel a bit selfish that they're looking after themselves, but it's not. Um, they need to really um, look at looking after, the, you know, taking that time out for themselves. It's so important and getting support. Um, but yeah, they're doing doing an amazing job, absolutely amazing job. If you, yeah, so many in this country that young people that are supporting, as you said, from the age of seven upwards. It's amazing what they do. So go back to that statistic. So that that's one in twelve young people then in the mm. UK are acting as young carers at the moment. It's that's, crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Yeah. When you look crazy at a classroom of thirty, you know yep. how many of those children are. You know that's nearly three children out of a classroom that could be going through us a daily yeah. um, daily life. And I think that's really important. You know, be kind to people, treat t kindness to your children because you don't know what they're going home to at the end of the day and what support they may need as well so I think it's really important to show love and kindness to everyone you meet. Definitely and I, I was reading um, the other day about with the survey done that 68% of young carers have felt that they've been bullied directly at some time for, for um, being a young carer so it's again it's another reason it's important to get for young carers to get support and um, through those different, you know, those different things. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? When you think somebody's been so strong and courageous to care for a family member mm. and that makes it a, a, a weakness for bullies. And it yeah, is yeah. such a strange world that we live in because yeah. if anything, they should be getting a pat on the back and yeah, you know, well done, you're doing a fantastic job. And, it's it's a crazy thing to then use that as ammunition to to yeah. bully somebody. It's yeah, awful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And lovely. And then, so, and there's there's lots of websites out there in terms of support. You know, supporting for where, where people can find support. I've um, posted some comments below, so I've um, put the the YMCA website down so our, our viewers can get access to that and um, there's a contact number and email address i've also put the find your local authority for adult social care oh, so if I you do. felt like you were um you are a young carer and you're in need of a care assessment you can access your local um adult social care services and you can do that following the link type in your postcode and it'll bring up the closest one to you with the details on if you feel like you need a new assessment or an update, you can also use that same link and that will also help you get in contact with the right services. I think another important one that I've popped down below is Childline because 
think that they provide an extremely important service as well when things get overwhelming and just having somebody to talk to. And I've also put the Carers Direct Helpline, which is also a very useful, helpful number to access. And even if you've just got inquiries about the care support and, and any questions in that way, you can just pop them a call as well. Fantastic. There's also Keith. Um, Keith is a brilliant um, service online for young people to get support. Um, so it's K-O-O-T-H. You've probably heard of it. Um, where they can they can speak to counsellors and different support. So yeah, that's good stuff. Lovely. What I'll do is I'm just going to pop the link down to Keith down on the comments as well, so people can access that. And it's got a um, an introduction video on. So if you want to see what how the service works before signing up to anything, you can just pop on and have a look. Lovely. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Mark. Thank, and, thanks, Ruby. And thank uh, you for explaining your amazing service because i think it's really important to get the message out there that you're working still through everything and you're taking on new re referrals uh, i guess you call it a referral do referrals you? yeah yeah yes yeah i know because i think i'm so one-minded yeah. i'm like what do other people call it clients patients friends like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah so thank you so much and for anybody who's got any queries, please contact myself direct or the village agents and we can put you in direct contact. Or if you'd like just to follow the links below, then you can follow them and reach out to the YMCA. And if you're feeling generous and want to make a difference, then please do donate. And there is a link below where you can do that. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.